With the Hashira arc finally being adapted to the anime of Demon Slayer, I wanted to do something a little bit different on my channel and go through the 9 modern Hashiras, explaining their backstories and feats that they have achieved so far, and ranking them in a tier list of how much I like the character. This will of course contain spoilers for the Demon Slayer manga, however I won't be spoiling anything after the Hashira training arc. This video will only contain spoilers for backstories as well as any content surrounding the Hashira arc itself. That being said, grab a snack because this will be a longer video and be sure to enjoy. Starting off the list, we have everyone's favourite flame breather, Kyojuro Rengoku. Known for being the flame pillar before his unfortunate death, Rengoku is the son of a previous flame Hashira as well, that being his father Shinjiro Rengoku. After losing his mother and hearing the news about his father stepping down from the Demon Slayer corpse, Kyojuro decided to devote his life to becoming the next flame Hashira, even becoming a teacher who would go on to train Mitsuri herself before she became the love Hashira. Eventually, Kyojuro would get his chance to prove himself to the Slayer Corpse by being tasked with taking down a 12 Kizuki, and the demon whom he would be asked to behead would be no other than Lower Moon 2. This particular demon had a connection with Kyojuro's father, as they both fought some time ago back when Shinjiro was the Flame Hashira. Kyojuro would happily take on this mission, itching to prove himself to the Slayer Corpse. You know how Rengoku is, regardless of the fight, he's always showing his burning passion. Once Kyojuro found the Lower Moon 2 demon, they would have an epic fight, pushing them both to their absolute absolute limits, with Kyojuro even developing his ninth form, Rengoku, and using it to win against a powered up Lower Moon 2 demon. Once the mission was completed, the Master of the Slayer Corps would acknowledge Kyojuro and would soon be made the new Flame Hashira, which would take us to the present day. The next time we see Kyojuro in the story, it would be when meeting the Kamado siblings, although at first he votes to behead Nezuko with her being a demon, he ends up respecting the Master's wishes for sanctioning both Nezuko and Tanjiro. Kyojuro would then end up investigating the missing people from the Mugen train, but beforehand would run into the Slasher Demon, who he made quick work of showing off his incredible strength and speed at this point in the story. Once the Slasher Demon is dealt with, Kyojuro would then board the Mugen train and would once again bump into Tanjiro, who would ask him about Hinokami Kagara. Although Rengoku would know nothing about Hinokami, otherwise known as the Dance of the Fire God, he would offer to take Tanjiro under his wing and train the young Slayer. However, things would quickly turn south as the Slayers would be put to sleep with a blood demon art from Enmu. While in the dream world, we see a little bit more detail about Rengoku's life, particularly how his father reacted to him becoming a Hishira, and how he uses that hate from his father and turns it into encouragement for his younger brother. Rengoku would soon sense that his soul was under attack though, and his survival instincts would kick in and put up a defense. Once awoken by Nezuko, Rengoku would make it his objective to protect all the civilians on the train while Tanjiro took care of Enmu and would manage to protect five train carts all on his own, displaying incredible speed. The train soon derailed with Rengoku using flame breathing to negate damage to passengers and protect anyone from being seriously injured. Once the train had come to a full stop, Rengoku checked up on Tanjiro and offered advice on how to stop the bleeding from Tanjiro's injuries. However, the worst scenario happened when an upper moon demon would arrive to kill the Slayers, that being upper moon free Akaza. Rengoku vs Akaza will go down as one of the most epic and intense fights in the series, with both characters showing off some incredible feats. It's important to know that Rengoku was able to hold his own for a while in this fight, and that's without any Demon Slayer mark. So fans can only wonder how strong Rengoku would have been with a mark. Rengoku would put up quite a fight against the Upper Moon, but unfortunately with Akaza's insane regeneration, Rengoku would soon run out of stamina and would try one last technique to win the fight, his famous knife form. Rengoku. Kyojuro would dash forward in a burning blaze, hoping to do as much damage all at once. Sadly, this attack would fail and Rengoku would meet his end. But just before his last breath, he would have one last flashback of his mother, where we see a touching moment of Kyojuro and his mother talking. Back in the present day, Kyojuro would see a vision of his mother in the distance, and with one last smile, he would pass his burning will onto the young Slayer. Overall, Rengoku is the goal, and no one can ever replace this character for me, so easily he He's going in God tier, no questions asked. <laughs> <laughs>
since we have just spoken about the connection between Rengoku and Mitsuri, it only feels right to talk about the love Hashira next. Mitsuri was born into a family of five siblings, but she was wildly different from her family, having incredible strength and muscle density even from a young age, being able to lift a 33 pound stone from the age of one. It was clear Mitsuri was not going to live a normal life. She also has an insane appetite, which leads her to eat more than the average human. Mitsuri particularly enjoyed Sakura Mochi, which is a nod to the colour of her hair being the same colour palette. Growing up, however, Mitsuri struggled to find a husband, as having bright pink and green hair with her body type would stand out, so a lot of men would end up rejecting her. Because of this, Mitsuri made an effort to blend in more by dyeing her hair and eating less. But because she suddenly stopped eating her usual diet, she would always feel lightheaded, which would cause her to constantly faint. Eventually, Mitsuri joined the Slayer Corps in search of a husband as strong as she is, and trained under Rengoku. She practiced flame breathing but struggled to learn the techniques as they didn't match well with her more flexible and agile movement. That being said, because Mitsuri had an insane amount of muscle density and therefore strength, she was able to become a slayer within just six months of training. Mitsuri would also assist Rengoku on his mission to take down a 12 Kizuki and while in battle would develop her signature breathing style, love breathing. With this new breathing style, she was able to become way more deadly and be able to hold her own in battle, which would allow her to protect a young boy and his mother. Shortly after Rengoku became a Hashira, it wouldn't take long for Mitsuri to also become Hashira status, which then takes us to the present day. The next time we see Mitsuri, it would be in the Swordsmith Village arc, where she goes to have her neat dream blade repaired. While waiting for the finishing touches on her blade, she makes the most of her time there by enjoying the luxuries of the village before bumping into Tanjiro. They would both chat for a while, with Mitsuri even braiding Nezuko's hair and acting much like an older sister to the two. Eventually, Mitsuri would begin to leave the village with her new polished blade, but would be urgently called back as two upper moon demons would attack the village. It would take some time for Mitsuri to reach the village, but once she did, Mitsuri would make quick work of any demons, even making sure to protect the civilians of the village. After some time, Mitsuri would arrive just in time to save Tanjiro from being crushed by the upper moon demon Hantengu. She would offer to fight the wood dragons, while the rest of our characters would go after the real body of Hantengu to behead him. Mitsuri would also develop her Slayer Mark in this battle, which would allow her to reach incredible feats and even hold off against one of the strongest emotions of Hantengu. Tanjiro would be successful in slaying the real body of Hantengu, which would allow Mitsuri to live another day. With the fight now being over and our characters making it to daybreak, they would all leave the village and head back to the Butterfly Mansion, where they would explain the Slayer Mark to the Master and other Hashiras. This would then lead the other Hashiras training all the other Slayers, for the final battle against Muzan. Mitsuri is a strong character and has a few standout moments, but when comparing her to Rengoku, it seems to me like I much more prefer Rengoku, so I will be putting her in A tier for now. Murichiro was born with a twin brother, and both were raised by loving parents. However, due to some unfortunate circumstances, their mother would fall fatally ill. In a desperate attempt, their father would try to search for herbs that would serve as medicine, but with it being incredibly stormy the night of the search, their father would fall off a cliff and lose his life. With no one able to get the medicine now for their mother, the twins would lose their mother as well. Now that the twins were completely alone, they had to learn how to survive for themselves. The two siblings survived together, though while Morichiro took after the emotive and kind nature of their father, his twin brother Yuichiro instead held a cold and impassive outlook on life. In the following spring, the twins are approached by Amane Ubayoshiki, who offers the young twins to join the Demon Slayer Corps, while also informing them that they are descendants of powerful Demon Slayers. Morichiro at first is excited and overjoyed about the news, but is quickly shot down by his brother Yuichiro, who shows aggressiveness and rejection at the offer. Amine is left with no other choice but to leave the twins alone for now. In the following summer, there would be one night in particular where it would be an incredibly hot night, and because of the hot temperatures, the twins would leave the front door open. When Ichiro awoke sometime in the night from dehydration and would go to drink some water, when out of the corner of his eye, a demon would be standing there at the front of the door, which was left wide 
open. The demon would go in to attack Murichiro, but his twin brother Yurichiro would use his body to protect his brother and would have his arm decapitated. The twins would cower back into a corner while this looming presence stood over them. But overcome with emotion, Murichiro would break out into a fit of rage and his vision would go black. When Murichiro did regain consciousness, he was stood over the mangled body of the demon. Murichiro had spent the entire night destroying the demon's body over and over and over again, but it wasn't until the sun rose that the demon finally died. Murichiro would struggle his way back to the house, but would eventually make it to Yurichiro, who was mumbling at this point about letting his brother live and admitting that he just wants the best for Murichiro. The twins would then lie there for several days. By this point, Yurichiro was no longer alive. Amane, who had previously checked up on the twins, would arrive to see the horrific sight. Both she and her daughters would immediately try to save Murichiro's life, knowing that Yurichiro was already gone. After some time, Murichiro made a full recovery and began to train in mist breathing. Unfortunately, due to the trauma of what had happened, Murichiro repressed all memories relating to his family and any new memories that he made, he would also struggle to remember. His head was like a thick fog now, where he was never really present at the moment and would subconsciously adopt his brother's personality of being cold and blunt. Murichiro would focus all his time into training and would even push his body to the brink of throwing up and coughing up blood and even then would continue to train and he became a Hashira faster than anyone else within just two months of joining the Slayer Corps, making Murichiro not only one of the fastest Slayers to get Hashira status but also one of the youngest Hashiras at just 14 years old. Fast forward to the present, Murichiro also ends up in the Swordsmith Village arc for similar reasons to Mitsuri. Unlike Mitsuri though, Murichiro would spend his time training and would act very coldly towards Tanjiro. When the Upper Moons attack the village, Murichiro ends up facing off against Upper Moon 5, Gyoko, and although Murichiro proves to have incredible speed and agility, he eventually gets injured protecting the villagers. After some back and forth between the Demon and Slayer, Murichiro gets trapped in a water prison. Although he tries to use mist breathing to slice out of the water prison, he ends up not being able to break it and would slowly start to lose consciousness. Murichiro then has flashbacks of his family and life before being a demon slayer and would remember all the trauma he endured. Meanwhile, a young boy living in the swordsmith village named Kotetsu ends up breathing some air into the water prison which Murichiro can use for one last attack, which ends up being successful. Now that Murichiro was free from the water prison, round two between the demon and slayer would commence. But this time, neither side was messing around. With Murichiro now remembering his past, he used his full power and even activated his demon slayer mark. They would have a fast paced battle before Murichiro would finally be able to behead the demon. Murichiro would be one of the only slayers in existence to solo an upper moon demon. Afterwards, Murichiro would aid Tanjiro in defeating Hantengu and would eventually make it back to the butterfly mansion where he would sleep for two days and be back to full strength by the third day. I do like Murichiro's character, but I wish we got to see more from him in the swordsmith village arc. Because of that, I'm going to put him in S tier, but he may definitely end up in god tier depending on what we get from him in later arcs. <laughs> Tengen was born into a family of shinobi, where both he and his siblings would train day and night to hone their shinobi skills. Unfortunately, by the time Tengen reached the age of 15, most of his siblings had died from the intense training, and only Tengen and his younger brother were the ones left standing. Due to the intense training, however, Tengen's younger brother was incredibly cold and distant. His younger brother also saw their now deceased siblings as nothing more than expendable. Tengen would then be given three women to marry, by the head of the clan as a means of creating more shinobi. These women, of course, would become Tengen's wives, Suma, Makio, and Tina. Tengen, however, had a different plan in mind and decided to leave the clan with his new wives, joining the Demon Slayer Corpse. And despite what previous shinobi believed in, Tengen told his wives to always put their survival above the mission. Due to his shinobi training, Tengen had incredible hearing and speed, which would eventually allow him to become a Hashira, developing 
developing his signature breathing style, sound breathing. He would also have the utmost respect for Kagaya Ubuyashiki as he would put the lives of people before anything else, which is something that his previous Shinobi clan didn't believe in. When our main cast gets to meet with Tengen for the first time, he's trying to take the girls of the Butterfly Mansion for a mission that requires female corpse members. Our main cast ends up volunteering so the girls of the Butterfly Mansion don't have to go. It's a good job that our main slayers chose to volunteer as this mission ended up being incredibly dangerous. It turns out that Tengen lost contact with his three wives who were on a mission in the entertainment district. So Tengen was hoping to find out exactly what happened. Once they all reached the entertainment district, Tengen disguises our main characters in female clothing and sends them undercover to find out information about his wives. Unfortunately, it turns out Upper Moon 6, Daki and Gyutaro were behind the disappearance of Tengen's wives. And so our main cast would both free Tengen's wives and fight against Gyutaro and Daki. This fight would go on all night with both sides pushing their limits. Our main cast ended up taking some devastating hits and for a while it seemed as if our slayers were actually going to lose, with Tengen also having one of his hands sliced off while fighting Gyutaro. With one last flashy attempt though, Tengen would use his ultimate move, musical score. When the musical score is active, Tengen sees the battle as musical notes and can counter attack against Gyutaro. With Tanjiro also activating his Demon Slayer mark for the first time, they end up beheading both demons simultaneously and winning the fight. Once Daybreak hits, the Serpent Hashira Obanai arrives on the battlefield. He speaks with Tengen who announces that he's stepping down as a Hashira and spending the rest of his life living with his three wives and making the most of it. I love Tengen's flashy personality and unique breathing style, not to mention that his breathing forms may be the coolest in the series, so for me, he would have to easily go into S tier. Oh. Giyome the Stone Hashiro has the most interesting backstory in my opinion. Similar to Moichiro, Giyome lost both his parents as a child. Giyome lost his mother when she was giving birth to him and he lost his father to a fatal disease. With no longer having parents, he ended up living in a temple and raising other children who also had no parents. So Giyome quickly became a carer of sorts. Unfortunately, Giyome ended up with an illness that caused him to go blind, but through this, his other senses were heightened. Giyome lived for a while looking after the orphan children. One of the children named Kaigaku, however, would make a deal with a demon to leave the temple doors open at night and get rid of the wisteria burners that were protecting the temple. Because of these actions, it got almost every single one of the orphans killed and the only ones left alive were Kaigaku, Giyome, and one of the young orphans named Sayo. Because of the trauma, Giyome, similar to Moichiro, would burst out into a fit of rage, destroying the demon over and over again with his bare fists, even getting injured in the process, which is where he got his forehead scar that we see in present day. After the sun had risen and the demon was burnt to ash, other people would arrive to the horrific scene, and because the demon's body was no longer there and Giyome's hands were covered in blood, people accused Giyome of killing the young orphans. Sadly as well, due to the trauma, Sayo, the young girl Giyome protected, couldn't utter a single word of what happened as she was in too much shock. So no one believed Giyome's story and he was seen as the person who murdered all the orphans. After the horrific trauma Giyome endured, Kagaya Ubuyashiki took the young boy in to join the Demon Slayer Corps. Giyome had so much raw talent and strength that it only took him two months to become a Hashira, which is exactly parallel to Morichiro. After becoming a Hashira, Giyome would actually go on to save the Kocho siblings, being a young Shinobu and her older sister Kane. Giyome would also take the sisters into the Slayer corps and start their training as young slayers with their respected breathing styles. Once we fast forward to the present day, it can be assumed that Giyome is training Sanami's younger brother Genya as we see both of them together when Giyome receives the news about Rengoku's passing. Due to Giyome having a tragic backstory and incredible feats such as destroying a demon with his bare fists, I would have to put the Stone Hashira in B tier as we've not really seen much from his character yet. 
Since we spoke about the connection between Giyomi and Shinobu, it feels fitting talking about the insect Hashira next. Shinobu grew up in a loving household with her older sister Kane. Their parents were attacked by a demon and brutally murdered. Giyomi, the stone Hashira, arrived just in time to save the sisters, and both Shinobu and Kane made a promise to join the Demon Slayer Corps and kill as many demons as possible so that this pain wasn't caused to anybody else. It didn't take long for the sisters to become slayers and both adopted their breathing styles. Kane trained in flower breathing while Shinobu trained in insect breathing. A fun fact about Shinobu's breathing style is that because Shinobu lacks the strength to behead a demon, she instead used her incredible speed to inject lethal wisteria poison into demons. She also frequently changes up these poisons so that nobody can be prepared for them. While the sisters were out exploring a village one day, they came across a young Kaneo who was being sold off for money. The sisters decided to throw money at the man that was selling her off to distract him and then run off with Kaneo taking the young girl in. They cleaned and fed the young girl but due to everything Kaneo went through, she didn't speak much and couldn't make a decision on her own. So Kane gave the young girl a coin to flip whenever she couldn't make a decision and depending on if the coin landed on heads or tails, depended on her decision. For a while, the three girls lived peacefully but one unfortunate day while Kane was out on a mission, she ran into Upper Moon to Doma. With it just being Kane versus the Upper Moon demon, it's no surprise that Kane suffered too many injuries and would unfortunately meet her untimely end. But not before Shinobu arrived to the scene where they would have one last chat. Kane told Shinobu about the demon she fought and since that day, Shinobu has made a vow to get revenge. The next time we see Shinobu, it would be during the Mount Natagumo arc where she is asked to help the young slayers on the mountain as the situation has become problematic for the Slayer Corps. Since Shinobu uses poisons against demons, she's very educated on how to cure most poisons herself and even saved Zenitsu from becoming a spider. During her moments on Mount Natagumo, we see just how fast she is facing off against one of the spider demons, even being able to dodge all the threads from the demon blood art. She makes quick work of this demon using her wisteria poisons and even taunts the demon. That's just straight up disrespectful. Afterward, Shinobu would meet back up with Giyu and would go in to attack Nezuko. Giyu defends the Kamado siblings, which somewhat surprises Shinobu. During this encounter, we get an idea of how cold and blunt Shinobu can be, with her even mocking Giyu. Both Shinobu and Giyu would go back and forth fighting until eventually it's announced that Tanjiro and Nezuko are to be sanctioned within the Butterfly Mansion. For the most part, Shinobu acts happy and carefree, at least on the surface, because during Tanjiro's stay at the Butterfly Mansion, he can tell that Shinobu has so much anger buried inside her from her sister's death that she takes it out on demons whenever she's out on a mission. Shinobu is an interesting character but apart from the Mount Natagumo arc we've not really seen much from her character yet. She does however have a very unique way of fighting against demons and for that I have to put her in B tier. She could end up in A tier or even S tier depending on how much character development she gets during the Hashira training arc but that remains to be seen. <laughs> Up next, we have the Water Hashira Giyu Tomioka, who is the first Hashira we ever meet in the series. Once again, it's no surprise that this character has a tragic backstory. Just be under the impression that every Slayer has a tragic backstory, which is what drives a lot of these characters. Giyu went through trauma at a very early age, losing his older sister, who protected Giyu from a demon a day before her wedding day. Similar to Giyome, Giyu tries to tell people about this incident, but is seen as a crazy person. Not many people know about the existence of demons as most of them come out at night. Giyu is sent to stay with a relative but is unable to forget about what had happened and so runs away due to the trauma. He would spend some time fending for himself until he bumps into Rokodaki, the previous water Hashira. He would take Giyu in and begin training him in water breathing. Giyu would soon meet Sabato who was not only a similar age to him but also had a similar backstory and the two would become instant friends. The two would spend time together training until they were ready to enter the final selection exam. Giyu is injured pretty early on though from a demon, but is saved by Sabato. Before Giyu can even thank his friend, Sabato runs off to help other slayers. The exam would go by with Giyu not killing a single demon. His friend Sabato on the other hand killed every single demon on the mountain apart from one, the Hand Demon. The Hand Demon would brutally kill Sabato, leaving Giyu the only one out of the two to come out of the final selection alive. This would develop an inferiority 
superiority complex within Giyu, believing that he shouldn't have been the one alive, and instead Sabato should have been the next war to Hashira. Some years would pass though, with Giyu achieving Kashira status, and would go on to meet Tanjiro Kamado, who was trying to save his sister, not knowing that she was already a demon. Giyu goes to behead Nezuko, but is stopped by Tanjiro. Eventually, the war to Hashira takes pity on Tanjiro, and tells him to seek out Rokodaki, who would train Tanjiro in water breathing. The next time we see Giyu is of course on Mount Natagumo, where he saves Inosuke from the giant spider demon and Tanjiro from the lower moon 5 demon. Giyu would then defend the Kamado siblings from Shinobu, and we see some back and forth between both characters, with Shinobu even stating that people don't much like Giyu and his stoic personality. This is somewhat evident when Nezuko and Tanjiro are sanctioned, because Giyu seems to not get on well with both Sanami, the wind Hashira, and Obanai, the serpent Hashira. Unfortunately, this is all we've seen from Giyu so far in the story, but I think his character is overall really interesting. For me, Giyu is easily A tier, but can very easily move up depending on what we get from his character in the next couple arcs. Good day, man. Sanami, the wind Hashira, is probably one of the more memorable characters in the series. Sanami grew up in a family of seven siblings and had a loving mother. Unfortunately, his father wasn't the same. He frequently hit the children, but Sanami's mother would try to take the brunt of it so that the children wouldn't have to suffer any serious injuries. One day, Sanami's father was out on a walk and would mess with the wrong person who ended up stabbing and killing Sanami's father. Once Sanami was informed of this, he just huffed without care. After after all, their father treated them terribly, so Sanami knew that he and his younger brother could easily look after their family. Now, with their father out of the picture, life would be a lot more happy and peaceful, until tragedy strikes again. One night, their mother would not return home. The children would grow more paranoid, and Sanami, being the eldest of the family, would go out looking for her, while Genya stayed home and looked after their siblings. The children would hear something outside, and would see their mother, assuming that Sanami had found her and brought her home. The children would then rushed to the door and the door would burst open from a sudden attack that killed almost every single one of the siblings. Their mother had been turned into a demon. This would then lead Genya trying to protect his last sibling and would get attacked by their mother. At first, Genya just assumed that the attack missed as he ended up getting a slice across his face, which is how he ended up getting his face scar. But it turned out the attack didn't miss but actually killed Genya's last sibling. Sanami would then come bursting through the front door and tackle their mother through the wall. He spent all night slicing at her with a butcher knife to prevent her from killing anyone else. Eventually, the sun rose and she was burnt to ash. Due to the shock, however, Genya wasn't able to process what had happened and saw his older brother Sanami as a murderer, which would drastically affect their relationship. Sanami was so upset with what had happened that he decided to just flee the area. Sanami would spend some time alone and he would lose all meaning to life. In his eyes, the world had completely lost its colours and he replaced the empty void feeling with slaying demons. Sanami would spend a long time alone, slaying the demons every night. The reason why Sanami was able to fight demons alone for so long without any breathing style or nitrine sword was due to his rare Marechi blood. Now, Marechi blood is a special type of blood within very few people in the Demon Slayer universe. This type of blood actually affects demons in a negative way and makes them somewhat drunk, as well as slowing down their attacks, which allowed Sanami to get the advantage in pretty much most of his fights against demons. Sanami would use his blood to hunt demons and would injure them to the point where they were unable to fight back. He would then string up demons and expose them to the sunlight, so they would burn to ash. Eventually, due to Sanami hunting demons, he ends up actually bumping into a demon slayer called Kameno, who would explain the demon slayer corpse to Sanami, and even begin training him to join the slayers. Some time would pass and the two would go on a mission together, where they fight Lower Moon 1. The two would struggle to fight the demon, but would eventually win, with Kameno dying in battle. Sanami once again took this death pretty hard and would end up fighting quite recklessly in the future because he just didn't care about his own life anymore. Any family that he did have or anybody that he cared for, he would always seem to lose. Since Sanami was the only one to survive the battle and defeat a 12 Kizuki, he would be promoted as the new Wind Hashira. This was also the first time that Sanami met Kagaya Ubiyashiki. Sanami despised Kagaya's happy nature and thought to himself, how could the head of the Slayer Corps be so joyful when so many Slayer 
players were out there risking their lives. When Sanami finally spoke up and voiced his anger to Kagaya, there was a moment of silence when Kagaya finally smiled and responded that due to his illness, he was unable to lift a sword and fight for himself. Kagaya would then go on to list a bunch of Demon Slayer members, which kind of shocked Sanami because Kagaya not only knew the names of every single member, but cared for every single one of them deeply. This kind nature and response from Kagaya reminded Sanami of his mother's personality before she was turned into a demon. Kagaya would then hand Sanami a letter from Kameno, which was his final words to him. The letter explained that he wished the best for Sanami and was hopeful that Sanami could live a peaceful life. Some time would pass and Sanami would go through many battles, which led to a surplus of scars on his body. If Sanami got injured in battle, it actually gave him an advantage. As I mentioned earlier, he had Marechi blood, which would make demons drunk when he fought them. Eventually, the Wind Tashira would meet Tanjiro and Nezuko. Sanami disliked both Kamado siblings since Nezuko was a demon, and Sanami only saw demons in a certain way. Sanami's younger brother Genyo would also join the Demon Slayer Corps, but the two brothers were still very distant, with Sanami hating the fact that his brother had now signed himself up for dangerous battles. Since the Hashira meeting, we've not seen much from the Wind Tashira. I'm not overly a fan of his chaotic nature, so I'm gonna put him into a B tier. I don't think he's a bad character, and he couldn't even end up higher on the tier list, but due to how he treats others, I'm not the biggest fan of his character. We finally come to the last Hashira on our list, the Serpent Hashira. Obanai's childhood was filled with betrayal. On the outside, it looked like he lived a very lucky life. Apart from being in a cage his entire life, he was actually treated like royalty. He was always fed lots of food and was treated incredibly well. But Obanai was incredibly suspicious of this. It just so turned out that Obanai was born into a clan consisting mostly of women. But here's the interesting part. There was a demon living among this clan that resembled a snake. The women of this clan would offer their newborns to this demon and in return the demon would provide a comfortable life for the clan members. Of course one day Obanai would be born and the demon immediately took interest in Obanai as not only was he one of the very few males of this clan but he also had heterochromia which caused his eyes to be two different colours. The demon saw this as a special circumstance and instead of eating Obanai on the spot she suggested to the clan members that they take care of Obanai until he grew a lot bigger, which is when she would finally decide to eat him. Obanai would spend years growing up in this cage, and every day would hear creaking above him. He would always feel like he was being watched as well. When Obanai's 12th birthday had come around, he was finally taken to the demon to be eaten. He finally clocked on what was going on, realizing that the demon was the thing that was making all the creaking noises every night. The demon, however, decided that Obanai wasn't big enough still and continued letting him live and get bigger, even telling the clan members to slice Obanai's mouth so that he would resemble the snake demon that much more. With this newfound knowledge, Obanai knew that he would have to escape. He managed to steal a hairpin from one of the clan members and spent day and night chipping away at the wooden cage. Obanai was always paranoid about being caught, but knew that the alternative would be to someday die from this demon. Eventually, he was able to escape the wooden prison and would make a run for it, managing to make it outside. The demon would catch on to this, however, and would catch up to Obanai. Thankfully, just before the worst could happen, a flaming attack would come out of nowhere. This would end up being Rengoku's father, Shinjiro Rengoku, who was the flame Hashira at the time. Shinjiro would destroy the demon on the spot and save Obanai. The two would then head back to the clan, where the only remaining survivor of the clan was Obanai's cousin. Due to Obanai escaping, the demon out of rage would kill all the clan members, leaving only Obanai and his cousin as the remaining survivors. Obanai's cousin would actually blame him for being the reason why they all died and with nothing left Obanai would abandon the area with Shinjiro and would join the Demon Slayer Corpse. Throughout the years Obanai would go around saving others from demons all while feeling the burden of his clan's deaths. Obanai believed that his only way to cleanse his sins was to die fighting Muzan and only then could he feel free. The next time we see Obanai would of course be when Tanjiro and Nezuko are sanctioned in which Obanai is against the idea of letting Nezuko live. Other than that we see Obanai briefly at the end of the Entertainment District arc when he's talking with Tengen. We've not really seen much from the Serpent Hashira yet and because of that he's probably at the bottom of the list for me when it comes to the Hashiras so he'd have to go into C tier. Once again this doesn't make his character bad or unlikable and I can see him climbing higher with more character development but right now 
he's definitely going to have to go in C tier for me. And that completes the ranking of Hasharas. My ranking may not be the same as what you would rank these characters, and you may have a different opinion on these characters. If so, then please feel free to comment where you would have put these characters. I know these characters have a lot more character development coming in the coming arcs, as I am aware with the story from the manga. However, I wanted to keep this as an anime only video as to not spoil for people who are anime only. So again, try to keep the comment section spoiler free. If you're going to list spoilers, then please use a spoiler warning at the top of your comment as to not spoil for anime only watchers. But as always, click on this video next if you would like to see more from me. But if I don't see you again, internet stranger, then I hope you have a good day. Pine tree logging off.